We have certainly done a lot of work to get to this point. We are just about to spend some time examining the SPSS output which we developed in the previous video for a MANOVA. This, is, this promises to be fun. Now some of this will, will tie you right back, but I want to remind you of all this. To conduct a MANOVA using SPSS, we will proceed as follows. We're going to check the dependent variables for normality. We're going to obtain a correlation matrix for our dependent variables. Conduct the MANOVA and evaluate all the assumptions and obtain effect size and power uh, for the MANOVA. And we, we were going to do these things to conduct a MANOVA. Now we have done a MANOVA and this will be the order in which the output appears. Uh, the test for the basic uh, assumptions of MANOVA that we would evaluate with SPSS or multivariate normality, that being kurtosis and skewness. We will do the linearity of the dependent variables, which will be a Pearson R to see if they have any linear relationship. We will examine the multivariate homogeneity of variance between the groups, which is a Levine's test, and we will also examine the multivariate homogeneity of covariance between the groups, which is the box M. The protocol for conducting MANOVA follows, and this is how uh, I, I will suggest the reporting of the outcome. We'll spend a little more time on this shortly, but the first thing you want to do is provide the descriptives. Then examine the data level and the assumptions, conduct the MANOVA, conduct the post hoc analysis as needed, and again, you only do post hoc analysis if you have significance, and evaluate the effect size and power if significance is found. We will now spend a few minutes going through the SPSS readout, which we developed in the previous video. Uh, you notice that it starts with the word frequency. Well, the first thing we wanted to do was to examine the uh, normality of our data sets to see if they were approximately normally distributed. We came up with this table. Now, I'm kind of funny, the percent women, percent black, percent Hispanic enrollments by these groups. I'm kind of funny because I, I love I'm throwing things out there. We've got the mean, median, and the mode for this data set. And it's interesting when you look at the uh, means across what they are. Now, uh, the thing that was of interest to us in developing or, or assessing these three variables, the percent women, the percent black, and the percent Hispanic, for normality are the skewness coefficients here and the kurtosis. Now, if we look at skewness, in those variables. We see that percent women is a negative 0.842. That means that it is skewed to the right. The percent black is 0.816 for the skewness, which is skewed to the left. Uh, the percent Hispanic, 0.915, uh, skewed, to, skewed to the left as well. So the data sets have some skew to them. Uh, I don't know that they have a terrible skew, but they do have some skew. The next thing we wanted to look at was kurtosis, and you'll recall that as kurtosis gets close to three, that's much more uh, uh, appropriate for a normal distribution. Uh, kurtosis less than three means that the data are flatter with, with ends out on each side, maybe wings that are drawing them around. Now, the percent women was a 1.924. That's not really too bad, but when you look at the percent black and the percent Hispanic, both of those have pretty serious uh, kurtosis out, out to the left. The data, uh, let's look at the diagrams now and see what we find. We get through, I, I just had to throw all of those frequencies out there that mean absolutely nothing. I could have turned them off. Now, the first one we want to look at is the percent women. Now, you look at the histogram. Uh, we know by the kurtosis that it's fairly close to being normally distributed. It is skewed a little bit out to the right, but that one's approximately normal. I think we can live with that. The percent black uh, had a skewness to the left, uh, pretty serious uh, kurtosis, uh, maybe close to normally distributed, not quite, but we can, we can tell that. I mean, it's nothing to be really panicked on. And the percent Hispanic, we see that it's, you know, it had a, had a skewness to the left, a, a pretty serious uh, uh, kurtosis as being flat, 
the means 37.99, somewhere right in this area, and we see that it's, it's flatter than, than a normal distribution, but we can live with that. The next thing that we did is that we wanted to look at the, uh, the correlations between the variables to see if there was any linear relationship. Uh, we start here with the percent women, and, and we look at that. You know, the percent women is correlated to itself 100 percent. Isn't that cool? Uh, we have a, a very weak correlation with the percent black and percent Hispanic. Uh, the percent black, again, we have a weak correlation with the percent women, but we have a, a, a strong negative correlation to the percent Hispanic, very strong. Uh, 0.70 would be extremely strong. 0.5 is strong. So a negative 0.5 is a strong correlation. The percent Hispanic, not a lot with uh, the percent women, but a uh, strong negative correlation to the percent black. So we would declare that. Then we did the general linear model to run our uh, uh, MANOVA. We have it broken out, percent women by groups. We know the mean, the overall mean of the data set standard deviation and the number that we had in it. Uh, you recall in our coding, our coding that one was a public uh, two-year degree granting community college, a two was a for-profit, private, for-profit uh, two-year degree granting uh, community college or two-year institution, and a three was a private not-for-profit. So we actually have here in this data set all of the descriptives that we need. Now, we want to examine some of the assumptions, and the box M here gives us our assumptions, and we know that the covariance, uh, there, there's, it tests the null hypothesis that the observed covariance matrix of the dependent var uh, variables are equal. We do not have covariance of the dependent variables, so we didn't meet that. Uh, here we have the actual uh, 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 MONOVA. Uh, we generally use a Wilkes lambdas, what we look at, and it is significant. There is significant difference. We notice that the partial eta squared is 0.47. That's pretty, pretty very strong uh, uh, partial eta squared, very strong effect size. And then we, of course, it cut this into the next page. But when we go into that for the group, uh, the observed power can't be 100%, but it's, it's a very strong, powerful test. The Levine statistic allowed us to look at uh, the significance of the uh, variance on the dependent variables across group. We just simply, with this data set, didn't meet the assumption for, for variance. So what, did, what do you do, homogeneity variance? What do you do? Well, you, you're working with an informed reader, and you just tell them that, and they can use it accordingly. We have some of the between subject effects that we might want to do. Uh, well, then, since we know we had significance, then the post hoc test has meaning. Uh, group one and two differ. Uh, one and three do not differ. Group two and one again differ. Group three doesn't differ from anything in the percent women. In the percent black, group one and two do not differ, but group one and three differ. And two differs from three in the percent black. And three differs from both group one and group two. In the percent Hispanic, one differs substantially from two, but doesn't differ from three. Two differs from one and differs from three. And three does not differ from one, but it differs from group two. So what we could say, if, for instance, in that last one, we have to know what these codes are. Three is our, uh, our private not-for-profit and it differs substantially in the percentage of the Hispanics with the private for-profit. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, we know that we have a good effect size and that we have a strong power in the test. If you were going to interpret the post hoc, let me carry you back up to your descriptives just to give you some idea of how important your descriptive statistics are. We know that three differs from two now then we can look at the descriptors, and if we know if three differs from two, we can obviously say that uh, the private for-profit have a higher ratio, a percentage of Hispanic students than the private 
uh, not-for-profit do. Pretty cool, isn't it? I always like to take just a minute and thank you for your support. You know, may the odds be ever in your favor. Live long and prosper. Peace and long life. There are a lot of greetings we can end with. I know you're working hard to master this material, and I do appreciate the fact that you've entrusted me with some of your dreams that you have of what you're going to achieve. You stick with this. You put the work in, and you master this subject well. The next video, we're going to take just a moment to look at the protocol and to talk about what you have to have when you conduct a MANOVA. Have a great one.